Yeah. Hair flip. Yeah, I'm a badass bitch. I don't like it. Hair flip. Yeah. Oh my god. So you guys should be happy. Oh my goodness. Hair flip. But anyways, hair flip. And hair flipping on these toes. Hi. Cassie is a singer, actress, model, songwriter, and a dancer. Her albums are Me and You, Long Way to Go, and A Fisher Girl featuring Lil Wayne, Is It You? Cassandra is a five-time national grand champion twirler. Because of her twirling is how her modeling career started. Cassandra models for Amber Crombie, Target, JCPenney's, Walmart, Delias, Seventeen Magazine, Victoria's Secret, and more. Cassie at age 14 began modeling and by the age 16 was modeling for local department stores, okay? Hi, my name is Cassie and I grew up in New London, Connecticut. I moved to New York when I was 18 to pursue a dream of being in the entertainment. Performing arts high school, mm -hmm. ballet? Um, I did modern ballet and jazz, yeah. Um, it's, you know, it was a great, I think it was an important thing for me, a great thing. Um, and I got into the musical theater program, so I started performing and singing on stage, which was a hard thing for me to overcome. Um, and I was taking vocal lessons, uh, meeting with producers, a lot of different things. So. And was it for you? How come? How come the ballet? Did, were you into ballet as a young kid? Well, or was it, it wasn't. It was. It, it was modern. It wasn't like oh, a modern. strictly. You know, it was for credits and you know to see if I really wanted to follow. Okay. You know, in that direction and. Um, you could take at that school. You could you could take a chorus. You could play an instrument. You could take theater, anything you wanted. Um, you know, in the performing arts, it was it was there for you at that school. So. Okay, and um, well, you also did some modeling. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like? Well, yeah. people think it's well, it's a glamorous <laughs> world, but also hard, hard, hard work. Right. Well, I, you know, I really was fascinated by the fashion industry at a, long, I, at a really young age. I started modeling when I was 12. I didn't get signed until I was 14, but I actually started working when I was 12 years old. So now I'm 20 and almost half my life I've spent in the entertainment industry. Um, and it's all about the work and all about really, you know, enjoying what you're doing. I ultimately just really, you know, I wanted to be a part of it in any way I could. And I know, knew that, you know, maybe modeling was a good way, you know. Maybe one day I'll design. You never know what's going to happen. But um, it was, you know, tough times and, you know, letdowns, but you get over those things. At a young age, it, it, it was difficult, but got over What was difficult, for example? Just, you know, no, you're, you know, too short. No, we don't like your look. And to hear that at 13, 12, 13 years old, um, you know, really brings down a confidence level but at the same time that's what made me stronger and my parents were really supportive and you don't need to do this anymore if you don't want to things like that but um, ultimately we were just supportive of me and what I wanted to do and I, I chose to do that so I modeled throughout school and high school and graduated Still in real crack and now it's Facebook and, and Twitter. Twitter yeah so I, I think I have you I'm following you on Twitter you are yes <laughs> do you have Facebook I have a Facebook, but I don't really use it that often. Are you still big on your MySpace? Um, I still have my MySpace, but um, and it has its like regular updates and stuff like that. But I think that 
the real time of Twitter is more interesting to people, so they don't really go on those type of things as much anymore. But the real time of Twitter is like a double-edged sword also. Yeah. Because it's so quick with information, people mm. are finding out stuff Yeah, it's, right then and there. I mean, it's that, and like I, I find it funny. It's like, um, I always tell everybody, it's like that show Gossip Girl. You can't lie about where you are ever, because somebody no. will take a picture of you walking down the street and be like, oh, I just saw... Yeah, on my Twit pic. Yeah, somebody just took the picture and posted it on Twitter. It's actually, it's cool, but it's weird. You know, I was going to ask you about that, like the best and worst thing about being Cassie. And and, and, (laughs) I mean, the best thing is, hello, you get to live out your dream and, you know, do the singing and the acting and modeling. But the worst part has got to be that people always all up in your business. Yeah. (laughs) So we can get this. um, Everybody can hear from me how focused and excited I am about the project. I wanted, you know, Cassie to, um, um, everybody to meet Cassie. Y'all know that sister. And um, hear the story directly from my mouth. And then um, we can get down to some business about just so we can be on the same page of what the plan is um, as far as from Tommy's concerned and um, from, from where we're concerned as also a label and one at Atlantic. So, so everybody's on the same page. Um, I think the best thing to do is to um, kind of give an overview or a history of um, of how we, we, we came to the project. Um, can't know where we're going, that's where we came from. Um, Ryan is a producer that I've been working with um, for the last two years. I was brought to me by Ed Woods, who um, did Ryan assign to their label and also um, as a producer and has done some stuff for the label and somebody's like one of my go-to people um, new act and just need a record right away to somebody that can go in the trenches musical genius you know new age Teddy Riley Dr. Dre Quincy Jones for real um, but to his level in his own way but he had something else that was very important that attracted me to his situation which was um, he had a, he had a, um, a new global outlook um, he his, he had a record that he didn't put out here and he went and started going over to Europe and doing shows and starting to build a following over in Europe. And I, I took notice to that because I, don't, I didn't really see a lot of artists that would have the ingenuity to do that. So when he was doing that, I heard he also had a young lady that was with him named Cassie that had a record out. And I start, started hearing this record that was haunting me in the clubs. And it was, you know, it, it was um, Cassie's record, me and you. And, um, and it, was, it was, I would hear it everywhere I was at. And so I kept asking, who, what record is that? And Gwen told me that it was Ryan's act, it was Cassie. Um, when I saw her, and I met her, and I saw this DVD on her, hopefully we can play it. Uh, it was actually uh, Diddy's makeup artist, a, a young lady by the name of Myla, who had told me about this young woman who had a beautiful texture to her voice that just needed to be developed. Now I showed this footage to show that Ryan states that the makeup artist of Diddy's told him about Cassie. Yet at the previous clip that we just watched, that was allegedly Ryan introducing Cassie to Diddy. Technically for the first time. That's why Diddy was, you know, introducing her. So which is it? Did Diddy know Cassie first because the makeup artist told Diddy about Cassie? Or did Diddy's makeup artist tell Ryan about Cassie and Cassie got introduced to Diddy through Ryan instead of the makeup artist, which still wouldn't make sense because if the makeup artist thought that Cassie has so much talent and she had a direct link to Diddy that worked that, you know, has bad boy records. Why would she not just take that information to Diddy himself? Why tell Ryan and have Ryan introduce Cassie to Diddy, which that was something that the makeup artist could have done herself. Hmm. So actually when I first heard about Ryan Leslie it was through a makeup artist that I had worked with and she was like, I know this really great producer. He is, you know, from what I've heard, he's really fun to work with. He's super talented and I think he would get along with him great. Uh, it was actually uh, Diddy's makeup artist, a, a young lady by the name of Myla, who had told me about this young woman who had a beautiful texture to her voice that just needed to be developed. Was it something you pursued, or was it something that came well? Uh... It was. It was something that I had uh, had dreams of doing for a long time. 
Since and when? Then, since when? Do you know so I was Since very young. Oh, you know what I mean? Okay. I was singing my whole life. I, you know, I sang in church. You know, I did all that. I was in choir at school. Um, you know, we had, you know, these little shows in middle school where the kids would get to put together um, a full show, like a, a musical. And I got to compose and write the music, which was cool. At, at a young age to have that experience. And I was playing the piano then and all of that. Um, but I, you know, like I said in high school, did musical theater, I was singing, taking vocal lessons and dancing. Um, I also got the chance to meet a really great producer, um, but I didn't get the chance to ever work with him and it just kind of gave me. Now remember, this interview is early on in Cassie's career. So when Cassie is sitting here stating that she got to meet this wonderful producer, and when she got to meet this producer, she was still in school, like junior high, high school, when she met said producer, and she says she never got a chance to work with him. That is a lie. The producer she met was Ryan Leslie. She was underage when she first met Ryan. Remember, again, that she was a model. She started modeling when she was 12, and she got signed when she was 14 she was on the cover of big magazines by the age of 16 years old which pushes a different type of energy to you especially being on the cover of set magazines even at a very young age so here is where it comes into play in my mind that ryan leslie knew cassie before she was an adult he knew her and had already met her physically met her before she was 18 years old now let's keep going um, but I, you know, like I said in high school, did musical theater, I was singing, taking vocal lessons and dancing. Um, I also got the chance to meet a really great producer, um, but I didn't get the chance to ever work with him and it just kind of gave me the bug and people, you know, kept asking me, do you sing? And I was like, yeah, I really want to do it, but I don't know the steps to take. Um, and, you know, moving to New York, meeting Ryan Leslie helped me along the way too. And, to do what I wanted to do. And, and this is the thing you like. Cassie moved to New York right out of high school. It made complete sense because she was already into modeling. She had already been back and forth to New York multiple times. And like she stated, she went straight to New York and met Ryan immediately. Why would she meet somebody immediately if they have had no contact? It's not like she got to New York and met him eventually. She went straight to New York to Ryan. Okay. You know, Moving to New York, meeting Ryan Leslie helped me along the way to and to do what I wanted to do. And, and this is the thing you like most, or modeling, or maybe combine it to in the future. Or it, you can definitely combine it to in the okay. future. But you say you see somebody like Beyonce, who's you know she does ads for the beauty ads yeah. and things like that. That plays into it. Um, um, just in the experience of being in front of the camera and um, being aware of yourself and understanding. It just, I guess being comfortable in your own skin, I guess, is the right way to say it. But, um, yeah, it, it helped me with the confidence level and all that. But I'm definitely um, enjoying being an artist right now. Okay, that's good. Um, well, let's talk about the new album then. Um, could you ever imagine the song Me and You being such a hit? I mean, when you sang it, or did you think, well, it has something special? Or um, I, I really love the track. I knew that it was something different, and so as well as my producer, he knew. Um, but I... You want everything to become a hit, no matter what it is. And it was a demo track, um, but you know when you're recording a song, you root for everything to be the biggest that it can be. Um, and that was definitely one that I personally I didn't expect, um, just from the ground up to grow into such a huge song and something that you know went all the way around the world. You know, now I'm in Europe. I was in Japan. And people knew what the words and knew who I was and all over America. Just that's crazy to me that people, you know, that I've never met people in places that I've never been to, never seen or heard of. Sometimes. What is the, the no. strangest ex experience you've had with fans? No, <laughs> no meaning. Take a break today so I can bring you a message from my partner on Cassie's project, Diddy, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, y'all? It's your friendly neighborhood international rap mogul superstar, designer extraordinaire, actor, marathon runner, father, friend. 
You know, I do it all, baby. TV producer. Enough about me. It's my homegirl Cassie right here. And we're coming to you live from our photo shoot for ID Magazine. She has her album in stores right now. Cassie, go get it. You'll know the hit single, Me and You. And, you know, we always communicate to you guys first. There's some things that have been on my mind that I asked Cassie if I could address. Um, when you're a recording artist, you know, you have good days and you have bad days. Um, a lot of times people don't understand that. Today I want to talk about how I feel as a record executive working with young talent. Um, when you sign somebody that's young, you have to be there with them through their ups and their downs. My homegirl Cassie right here, she had a, a semi, no I would say it was a whack show. She had a whack, she had a pretty whack show on BET. You know, um, did not perform at the level of the bad boy excellence, I would say. That's keeping it all the way funky, you know? But it's very important that y'all understand that bad boy, we with our artists through their growth period, through their bad shows, through their good shows. You know, we, we love them when they records are hot. We love them when they trip and fall. At bad boy, we there for people through ups and downs. For all the new young artists out there that think this is easy, it's not easy, you know? You have to be able to fall down and right. get up. Granted, she had a wax show, but she also got the hottest song in the clubs, and she ain't never gonna give up, because she down with Bad Boy. Every show, she'll keep getting better and better and better. That's what life is all about. So all you haters out there, kiss my mother All you friends and family, you know I love you guys. But anybody's down with the Bad Boy family, they down with me for life, and we there for them. But it's important that you know that I ain't going easy on her butt. We gonna make sure that next time y'all see her perform, that she gets better that time, and the next time, and the next time. But that's life, boys and girls. Some days you do good, some days you do bad. So I heard about a whole lot of criticisms online. I think she has too. And to be honest, we agree with some of your criticisms. There's always room for improvement. And at Bad Boy, we stick with our artists till they improve. She's a human being. That's what we all love about her. The people that love her. The people that hate on her, they was gonna hate her anyway. You know what I'm saying? But y'all will love her one day. It's Bad Boy. in the studio. Cassie? Yes. Of course you've been just railed with what's up with the pigs? What happened? And I want right. you to I'm asking everything with love and respect. You know me. I hope you can see the sincerity in my face. I can see it in your eyes. So <laughs> I'm not gonna go with what were the pictures about. They are what they are. Mm -hmm. What like clearly I guess the, the, the thing I want to know is who I was told they were leaked, true or false. True. Not by you, right? Not by me. Definitely not by me. Do you know who did it or do you have an idea? Um we're Closer to an idea of who did it, yeah. It's it's being somewhat investigated. I mean, I'm not really supposed to talk about it like that, right. but um, yeah, I think we're close to finding out who it was. Now, leaked from a, a laptop or a cell phone, or how did that go? I wasn't sure what the situation was until I guess we asked more questions and kind of found out more things, but it was an, an old email from like last year that I had. Actually, a Gmail. Gmails sometimes are really the worst. Wow. That's how I lost a lot of music, too. To, I got music leaked as well at the same time. So when people say songs got leaked, or in your case photos and music, mm. Gmail could be somewhat the uh, the guilty party in kind of aiding that. Yeah, I mean, I maybe think it, it's just a it's a very like open. Like I don't know if it, have you ever heard of G Gmail's app yeah, app like that? I don't know. I have a, I, Gmail a lot account. of people, a lot of people in the in the music industry do, and um, it was a, it was like a year ago that I took the pictures and sent them. I don't even have the pictures anymore. So that was the crazy part about it. So when it popped up online, how, how did you find out and what was your reaction? Um, I got a phone call. It was like I was actually out here and I got a phone call at like 11 o'clock at night and my stomach fell <laughs> You're like, oh. all the way down <laughs> to my bottom. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I freaked out for a second and then, you know, what can you do when that happens? And, I, you know, 
the truth about it is, is that a lot of people take pictures like that for their, you yeah. know, their significant other. Um, and that's what it was for me. I, I had sent them to someone. So now I've learned not to use an email to send a picture, obviously. That's so I guess everybody um, everybody can learn from the situation. Like, everybody yeah. can learn from the situation. Yeah. Don't send pictures through email. Yeah. Take a <laughs> pic and, do it. and like hold it up and then delete it. That's, yeah. about, that's about all you need to know. So uh, if uh, once you you know confirm who, who did this, what what actions can you take on this person, um, or is there anything you can do? There there is there definitely is. I haven't decided yet uh, about how I feel, and you know, I, I mean it's gone, it's past, and it, it came out. I don't know. There's nothing you can really do about it now, but you know we'll see. All right. Well, I might go and torture somebody. Freaking <laughs> hand, <laughs> like a, a attach electrodes to parts of bodies, shoot the <laughs> juice, enjoy. Yeah. All right, you guys, coming up next, let's talk about. Now, I'm not saying that celebrities don't get hacked. It happens all the time. Cell phones, uh, laptops, computers, you know, all type of situations. I mean, look at this situation on The Guardian with the FBI investigating hack of naked photos of Jennifer Lawrence and others. Um, let's get a little bit into this article here. Um, the FBI is investigating the hacking of celebrity nude photos, including those of Academy Award winning Jennifer Lawrence, it has confirmed. Images of more than 100 actors, singers, and celebrities, including what appear to be nude photos and videos, have been leaked by a hacker using the internet forum 4chan. So, I um, mean, that this definitely does happen, but we got to get into the nitty gritty of things, y'all. And with that being said, let's get into this right here. It's your boy Quake, and for those wondering what happened to Ryan Leslie, well, he's been going through a lot of lawsuit issues ever since that incident in October 2010, where he got some stuff stolen in Cologne, Germany, specifically his laptop, some jewelry, and some other stuff. And this isn't a what happened to video on Ryan Leslie, because this guy is still making music, he's still touring, he's doing well, and I'm sure he's going to come right back on top after he figures out all of this. But... In 2010, like I said, he got his stuff stolen. He offered a reward of $20,000 initially to anyone who brought back his stuff. But nobody was responding, so he increased the reward to a million dollars. And then finally, a German man named Armin Augustine contacted police saying that he had found the laptop. He said he found a backpack in a garage bag in a forest and decided to bring it home. He then found Leslie's passport, searched his name on the internet, and found out about their award. He refused to pay the one million because his music files had been corrupted. He basically didn't want his songs in MP3 format because a producer can't really do much with the song that's in it. And let's also pay attention to the fact that Ryan offered one million dollars to get this back. Now, Cassie's music was already leaked, okay? and any other artist that he was producing at the time was leaked. Why would you raise it all the way up to $1 million if it's not something dire that you are trying to get back? Come on now, we gotta think about that. You are willing to pay $1 million to get this back. What is so important that you are willing to give $1 million for? Think about it. Ryan lost that baggage in 2010. Now, if you think about it, the same thing happened with R. Kelly. He lost a bag, a gym bag, and that bag had those videotapes in it, you know, to what a lot of charges is being brought up on him today. So jumping back to Ryan Leslie, that ba the bag was removed and it just so happened to have very important, you know, things in there. There has been rappers that um, have been missing things as well and missing luggage, you know, that had computers or, you know, they try to make it seem as if they're looking for music, but it's really something else that they're looking for. You know, it's really something else that's dire that they get back so if you pay attention to the clips with cassie Cla cassie does not know what's going on she doesn't know what's happening when it comes to the nudes being leaked and things of that nature because like she said she's not the one who leaked them the videos and the footage of cassie nude all of that was leaked in 2010 his bag yeah ryan's bag came up missing in 2010 the same year that cassie's nudes were leaked so and cassie's music was also leaked if you pay attention i'm gonna play that clip again her music was also leaked who did her music in producing her before anybody it was ryan so with ryan looking for music that music was cassie's and not only was that music cassie's those nudes came from his computer while Ryan probably doesn't want to be connected to those photos of Cassie, because 
I've done my research and from what I've gathered, Cassie is not of age in these photos here. And the photographs that are being shown that are on the internet of Cassie in her nudes, she was not of age. She also did not have the tattoos that she has. None of them. Her body is bare with no tattoos besides a small one that is right underneath her armpit. She was not of age. That is a tattoo that was done outside of a parlor. Outside, that was not professionally done. So those photos of Cassie allegedly are her under age. And those photos and that video are also under banned sex tapes on the Internet. And you can look that up for yourself. Why would it be banned if nothing was wrong, if she's a consenting adult, it's not. She was underage. We're closer to an idea of who did it, yeah. It's it's being somewhat investigated. I don't even know if I'm really supposed to talk about it like that. Right. But um, yeah, I think we're close to finding out who it was. Now, leaked from a, a laptop or a cell phone, or how did that go? I wasn't sure what the situation was until, I guess, we asked more questions and kind of found out more things, but it was an, an old email from like last year that I had. Actually a Gmail. Gmails sometimes are really the worst. Wow. That's how I lost a lot of music too. To, I got music leaked as well. You can check out the rest of this article at monstersandcritics.com. Even though Ryan Leslie hasn't been linked to Cassie for years, people are now bringing him back into the picture, saying the breakup looks like karma. During an old interview with DJ Vlad, Ryan Leslie addressed the rumors that he had dated Cassie. He seemed to step around the answer, saying that they were very close and that they had a connection, but he did admit that he loved her and that they shared a deep passion for music. You can check out the rest of the interview on DJ Vlad. So Cassie has never admitted that she has dated Ryan Leslie. Ryan Leslie danced around the question when asked if he dated Cassie. Why would anybody think they dated if there wasn't reason for people to feel that they were dating? I feel the reason Ryan Leslie and Cassie Ventura will not admit the fact that they dated is because it started when Cassie was underage, allegedly, is when it started. What other reason would they not want to claim a relationship that they've had with one another, especially as two consenting adults? It definitely, definitely looks a little funny. Chilling with my boy, Mikey Fresh. You know what it is. We live in the same building. It's kid Mikey Fresh in the building. Lovely and beautiful Cassie. Um, it's been about, you know, two years since your last album dropped. Uh, me and you had the radio smash. What's different now about this new album? Um, this new album is, is a little bit more of me, and I've taken the time out to really find my sound and my flavor and, you know, just just what gets me going. So I hope that shines through. Okay, there's got to be also a lot of things that you've learned from just being in the industry, being around people. Um, is there some lessons you can give out there, some important things, some jewels? Uh, some jewels. Don't dive in. <laughs> On set at my video shoot for Must Be Love. The concept of the video is a setup of two apartments, a wall separating myself and Puff, who has um, two verses, two rap verses on the, the song. And um, it's a hot day, she's sweaty, um, and we're singing about how it feels to be in love. You know, physically have changed since my last video, Official Girl. And you know, I become more of a woman, so, you know, more comfortable in my own skin, and, and I move differently, so I think that that's definitely reflected. I, well, recently, I just shaved <laughs> the right side of my head. Everybody thought I was crazy, and I told my mom about it, and she thought I was crazy, and I just woke up one morning, and I was like, I'm ready to do it, and it was a very liberating feeling, and I, and I almost feel more comfortable and more myself 
with this hairstyle. So I'm glad that I get to debut it. You know, I've gone through a lot of changes and, and um, be it label changes or just changes in me as a person. But ultimately, um, it came down to building a body of work. And, and when I was putting out things like Official Girl or Must Be Love with Puff, they were all singles. They weren't um, connected to anything. So for the first time, you know, this body of music was, was all connected in its own way, but didn't necessarily fit the criteria of what my label would, would have wanted to put out as an album. Yeah. Did it start? Yep. Can you pull a dork face for us? What makes you really happy? Sleep. Sleep makes me really happy. Do I have any phobias? I'm a germaphobe. Don't shake my hand if you didn't wash yours. <laughs> my favorite YouTube video would have to be... Kid Fury. Yes! Period. Should I imitate it? Okay. Queen Bee's hair is laid like easy, breezy, beautiful, bad bitches. <laughs> Beyonce dress is cunt. <laughs> you have a hidden talent. I don't hide my talents. <laughs> just show your favorite swear word without naming it. Can I just like point to the toilet? The toilet's in there. <laughs> How did you get into music? I got into music because I moved to New York and I started recording a bunch of records. And um, I posted one of my favorite demos on MySpace. This song was called Me and You. And that's where it all started. Your debut album was released in 2006. Why have you chosen to wait until now for this will be with my girl Cassie Ventura. Mm -hmm. Just the tip, all tips on love, relationships, sex, and it's rare for me to get a female in here. Is it? Yeah. I mean, I have guys rolling in here all the time, and hearing from the guy's perspective is one thing, but I'm very excited to have you here. Thank Obviously, you. we have the new music, Love a Loser. We do. So, I mean, I think that's a great way to start off, <laughs> loving a loser. We've all been there, I feel like. We've all been there. As women, unfortunately, we've all been there. It's something that we're probably all going to have to go through. Mm -hmm. um, but for you, what is that process like, loving a loser and get, getting out of that? Well, when I wrote the song, um, the lyrics are, I'd rather lose a lover than to love a loser. So I'd rather lose like the love of my life than to love a guy that's just whack. And right. I think um, the experience of getting over it is usually pretty quick and easy if you really don't think that he's right for you anyway right. um just keep it moving <laughs> it's it's not always that easy it's to not like, always that easy right but like if you were paying for everything for him mm -hmm. or you were taking care of him or he just didn't have any drive or he's not stepping up he's not stepping up you have to think about those things like in your future i think that that's important but have you ever gotten dumped have i ever gotten dumped of no. course not. <laughs> Actually, no. Nope. No! You've never gotten dumped. <laughs> no, I oh feel like mo in more re relationships than not, it was a mutual decision. Right. And if not, then it was like, I was like, that's done. What was the hardest breakup you've ever had to do? Ooh. How did you do it? It was probably... Breakup tips from Breakup Cassie. tips. <laughs> it was probably like my high school boyfriend, but we broke up after high school because right. we moved away from each other. So it was difficult. We still loved each other. Right, but we're separated. So. But we were separated and it was never going to really work out. What are your top three go-to things for somebody trying to get over a breakup? Mm, I think that you're allowed to wallow. Like you're allowed to be sad. Mm -hmm. But then you need to get out of the house and you need to work out or do something active. And um, hang out with your girlfriend. Sometimes you need to visit like female, and so it's gonna be interesting to see how people receive it. Your relationship is all over the place. People try to get a piece of mm -hmm. what they think they know. Mm -hmm. Is that hard for the relationship? Um, is it annoying? It, it is, but you know, it, we've really been left alone in terms of just like the paparazzi or people going crazy. Like people really just like let us chill, which is nice. But yeah. it is it is hard when you're in the public eye for sure.
can it change things or you guys have just learned to you know what you just that's learned what it is. I think you just learn to adapt to it after a while because if you have love for each other then there's nothing that should get in the way of that okay final question mm -hmm. craziest place you've smashed ooh <laughs> craziest place I've smashed. Okay, it wasn't like dirty, but it was at a club. It was at a club. Which club? And it, I'm not telling you. Oh my god! <laughs> it was in a very clean situation. I know that for sure. What city was the club in? <laughs> Miami. Miami club. Yeah. Eleven. No. <laughs> Story. No. Oh my gosh. I don't okay. even know if the club exists anymore. Oh my things. gosh. Yeah. Okay, club life. <laughs> were, were there anyone watching? No, 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 no. That would be fire. It was a quick moment. <laughs> it was a quick moment. Quick little one. Yeah. Quick little just a tip. <laughs> <laughs> Just a tip for the cat. Thank you so much. I wanted to ask you, I want, can't wait to see 3 a.m. Yes. The controversy. Yeah. Uh, How can we get a tape of this? Oh, I'm going to send it to you. I will email it <laughs> to you. Email me the yes. whole thing. Yes, I love yes, it. Yes. I love that you're constantly you. crushing the glass ceiling, or crushing yes, the black yes. ceiling. Yes. You're Not one of the first. One of the first. And I'm be, I'm blessed to be in this industry. And, yes, and you and I just try to blend it with my artistry. Yeah, and you create that. I, I'm thrilled. I want to see that like tomorrow, 8 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Send it to me at 3 a.m. in the morning, okay? So I'm yeah. wondering about the boyfriend, <laughs> Diddy. Whether he came to the set to make sure everything was copacetic with you. No, he actually uh, really trusted the situation. Him and Terrence spoke beforehand because Terrence. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, you date P. Diddy? Oh, wow. I did not know this. Yeah. Hold yes, the phone. Craig. You know, yes. I normally, I typically don't talk about my private life. Well, but forgive me. They put it on the television. They put it, they put it on the television. Yeah, so, yeah, I okay. mean, I, I don't go, like, really, it's your I'll business. I'll let that one go, I So, uh, all right. But wait, she was telling the story that... So, so yeah, okay, so, so Terrence was a bit nervous, um, and I told... Uh, puff about it and he said to have him give me a call so we facetimed and they had their man talk and he said make it believable you guys this is like gonna be a great movie for you and he's proud of so, us it's all very personal just all the way around so a lot of it pretty and, much all of it and we've known you now when did you come up bus on the scene when was that first record uh me and you came out in 2006 2005 really. actually it was 2005 because mm. it was myspace Um, we just want to say that we hate fake bitches. All of them. Yeah. Um. So, I just got out of jail. This is what I look like. I just got out of jail and she came and picked me up. I came to pick her up. No makeup on. You feel us? Don't leave your fresh. It's dynamic. So, uh, it's dynamic. So, uh, you feel us. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we have the mixtape out now, but what's coming after that? When are we going to hear this uh, other album? How long has it been since the the, the, the last album? Was it like six years now? Seven or something? years. Seven years. Seven years. Why the long break for you in your in your mind? How would you break it down for the fans? They're like, oh, yes, we have the mean, real album. What the heck? I think the most real thing that I can say, and I actually have I've never said in an interview before, is that you know, it it has a lot to do with your presence at a label, at the label that you're at, yeah. and you know how That's well you're respected with the people that you're working with, and. Um, I put out a lot of records, or, yeah. you know, scattered yeah. here and there, um, that didn't really, you know, stay afloat, surface the way that we wanted to. So um, I just had to go out there and, like, prove myself a little bit more. Yeah. And, you know, show that I can be respected as an artist.